Greetings, little scholars. It is week um, four, and this is your Tuesday video. Thanks for joining us. If you have your um, cootie catcher in front of you, I want to talk to you about another um, ancient civilization that we're going to add to this cootie catcher. So get your cootie catcher ready. We're going to look on the map. This is another civilization that we're going to say is kind of in the north. And the civilization is in the same part of Mesopotamia. So we have the Sumerians between the Tigris and the Euphrates River. And now the part, um, now this land has been taken over by the Babylonians. I've got to spell that correctly. The Babylonians. And I want to tell you a little bit more about the Babylonians. This is a name that maybe you have um, read or heard about if you have um, read anything in the Bible. But this is an interesting story that affects our lives even today. Okay? Mesopotamia was not a very peaceful place to live. City-states fought each other. Powerful leaders tried to build empires by conquering smaller city-states. Sometimes the empires lasted for a long time. Sometimes they collapsed in just a few years, and another powerful leader tried to take over. The people of Mesopotamia lived with war all the time. Sometimes they stayed inside their city walls and hoped they would be safe. Sometimes they fled, and they would travel to another place, hoping to avoid trouble. Um, and um, in the Bible, um, a character named Terra left Ur because he was afraid that another city would attack Ur and conquer it. And the name of that city was Babylon. Babylon was a city near Kish where Sargon used to live. But the king of Babylon, whose name was Hammurabi, only ruled a small area of Mesopotamia. Soon he began to conquer some of the smaller cities around him, and he convinced the kings of other cities to swear allegiance to him. Soon he ruled over the whole of Mesopotamia. This area was called Babylonia, after the city of Babylon. Hammurabi didn't want people to obey him just because his army was strong. So in this sense, he's different students from Sargon that we learned about yesterday. He wanted his empire to be governed by just laws. He believed that the chief god of Babylon, Marduk, made him king so that he would treat people fairly. In one of his letters, Hammurabi calls himself the reverent, God-fearing prince. He says that his job as king is to make justice appear in the land, to destroy the evil and the wicked, so that the strong might not oppress the weak. Hammurabi wanted people to follow his laws because they were right, not just because soldiers were making them obey. He also wanted his whole empire to follow the same laws and rules. So Hammurabi wrote down all of the laws that he thought were fair. He had them carved down in stone on a monument that showed him getting the laws from the sun god. These laws are called the Code of Hammurabi. Hammurabi. They are the first set of written laws that we know of. They were unusual because everyone had to follow them. Rich people, poor people, soldiers, farmers, merchants, and even kings. Here are some of the laws in the Code of Hammurabi. Do you think these are fair? Why or why not? If someone cuts down a tree on someone else's land, he will pay for it. If someone is careless when watering his field and he floods someone else's field by accident, he will pay for the grain that he has ruined. If a man wants to throw his son out of the house, he has to go before a judge and say, I don't want my son to live in my house anymore. The judge will find out the reasons. If the reasons are not good, the man can't throw his son out. If the son has done some great evil to his father, his father must forget, forgive him the first time. But if he has done something evil twice, his father can throw him out. If a thief steals a cow, a sheep, a donkey, a pig, or a goat, he will pay ten times what it is worth. If he doesn't have any money to pay with, he will be put to death. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. If a man puts out the eye of another man, put his own eye out. If he knocks out another man's tooth, knock out his own tooth. If he breaks another man's bone, 
break his own bone. If a doctor operates on a patient and the patient dies, the doctor's hand will be cut off. If a builder builds a house and that house collapses and kills the owner, the builder will be put to death. If a robber is caught breaking a hole into a house so that it can get an in still, he will be put to death in front of the hole. <laughs> I don't know. Some of these laws are kind of interesting, aren't they, students? Hammurabi was a very religious man. He believed that the gods themselves had given him the code of Hammurabi. So he rebuilt many of the temples and the ziggurats that had been destroyed in fights between city-states, and he encouraged his people to sacrifice to the gods and to learn more about them. At that time, people in Babylon believed that they could find out what the gods were doing by watching the movements of the planets and the stars. So they spent a lot of time studying the sky. They knew where all the constellations were, and they knew the difference between stars and planets. From watching the sky, the Babylonians were able to figure out that the earth goes all the way around the sun. And they called the time that it took the earth to go all the way around the sun one time, one year. And then they divided the year into 12 months. And they were the first people to divide a year into 12 months, just like we do today. The Babylonians were also the first to divide a day into 24 hours and to divide an hour into 60 minutes. So whenever you look at a calendar to see what day of the month it is, or look at a clock to see what time it is, you're using methods that we inherited from the Babylonians. Okay. Oh, I just think that's so interesting, students. Okay, so on the other tab that has to do with the north, I want you to write Babylonians. And I've got it written right here. B-A-B-Y, baby. L-O-N. I A N S B A B Y L O N I A N S. Okay, Babylonians. Now I've got to open it up and I have two triangles that I can write on one curse, one bad thing that could happen to you if you lived in the Babylonians' time, and one good thing that could happen to you if you lived in the Babylonians' time period in Mesopotamia. So, bad things, students. What are we thinking? Um, how about you killed a patient in surgery? Now you have to die. <laughs> um, that would be bad. Um, no, what, or was it his hand had to be cut off? Maybe it was his hand had to be cut off. If the builder, that's right, the doctor's hand had to be cut off. But if a builder builds a house, and that house collapses and kills the owner, the builder will be put to death. So maybe the bad thing could be you, um, the house you built fell down. You have to die now. Okay, I'm going to write that. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Have you heard that expression before? Did you know that came from Hammurabi's Code of Laws? You have to die. Okay, that doesn't sound too good. What are some good things that could have happened? Um, well, your dad won't throw you out of the house. <laughs> your dad can't throw you out of the house. Oh, I know what could be a good thing. Um, a thief stole your cow. Now you get 10 cows. Right? They have to pay back 10 times. Or pig. Stole your pig. Now you have ten pigs. What are some other good things that could have happened as a result of those laws? So students, I've got all my curses and my blessings from the Babylonians. Good fortune and bad. Um, maybe you could say um, you um, what else was a good thing that could have happened? You studied the stars and learned about um, the months and the days. Okay, You're a famous scientist. You developed the calendar and clock. That could be a cool thing that would have happened at the time. You... Um, you follow the code of Hammurabi, 
um, Hammurabi and you um, prosper. Okay, another good thing. Someone ruined your crops, you get paid back. Someone cut a tree on your property, you get a tree back again. Um, I liked the animals best because they had ten. They got ten back. Um, but some of the other punishments seemed a little harsh. Do you think that they had no crime? Do you think people were really good? They followed that code of Hammurabi. Um, maybe they did. All right, students, we're going to continue on now with our language art studies. If you finished just that section on the Babylonians and the Sumerians on your cootie catcher. Feel free to do some fun illustrations if you want to, if you have room, of that hand being cut off or um, a little pig. If you want to illustrate each of those triangles, you can as well. I want now to talk about, um, to show you a clip about um, the movie Inside Out, okay? And we're going to watch this clip, and then I'm going to relate it to punctuation, okay? This was um, a video that I discovered on YouTube that um, has some, that, that came out before. It was supposed to be a sneak peek of Inside Out, and it actually has um, clips that weren't actually even in the movie, so deleted scenes. So that's kind of cool. Let's just watch a little bit of this. Joy, but I'm, oh, I'm not scared of everything. Mom, I see! They feel possessed! They feel all Parsha! We are no longer Parsha. We are the shoes. No! No! Ah! watch a nature show. A young deer grazing quietly in the meadow has no chance against the vicious jaws of a grizzly bear. <laughs> so, Shoes of Doom? Absolutely. Of course, yes. We are the shoes. We are the shoes. Investor's supposed to show up on Thursday, not today. Uh, I gotta go. It's okay. We get it. The best. Thanks, honey. Hey, sweetie. He just left us. Oh, he doesn't love us anymore. That's sad. I, I should drive, right? Sorry. What are you doing? Uh, just uh, give me one second. Um, you know what I realized? Riley hasn't had lunch. Remember? Hey, I saw a pizza place down the street. Maybe we could try that. Pizza sounds delicious. Pizza? pizza. Yes, pizza. <laughs> right on, that's good. What the heck is that? Hey, there's broccoli on pizza. That's it. Congratulations, San Francisco. You've ruined pizza. First the Hawaiians, and now you. Anyway, these are Riley's memories, and they're mostly happy, you'll notice, not to brag. But the really important ones are over here. I don't want to get too technical, but these are called core memories. Each one came from a super important time in Riley's life. Uh, like when she first scored a goal. Oh, that was so amazing. Core memory powers a different aspect of Riley's personality. 
Like Hockey Island. Goofball Island is my personal favorite. Ball is the best. Here we go. All right, open. Hmm, this looks new. Think it's safe? What is it? Uh... Okay, caution. There is a dangerous smell, people. Hold on, what is that? This is disgust. She basically keeps Riley from being poisoned, physically and socially. That is not brightly colored or shaped like a dinosaur. Hold on, guys. It's broccoli! <laughs> yeah! Saved our lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're welcome. Riley, if you don't eat your dinner, you're not gonna get any dessert. Wait, did he just say we couldn't have dessert? That's anger. He cares very deeply about things being fake. So that's how you wanna play it, old man? No dessert? Oh, sure. We'll eat our dinner right after you eat this. Ah! Riley, ah! Riley, here comes an airplane. Ah! Oh, airplane. We got an airplane, everybody. <laughs> First day of school, very, very exciting. I was up late last night figuring out a new plan. Here it is, fear. Run. I need a list of all the possible negative outcomes on the first day at a new school. Way ahead of you there. Does anyone know how to spell meteor? Disgust. Make sure Riley stands out today, but also blend in. When I'm through, Riley will look so good, the other kids will look at their own outfits and barf. Joy. Yes, Joy? You'll be in charge of the console, keeping Riley happy all day long. And may I add, I love your dress, it's adorable. Oh, this whole thing? Thank you so much. I love the way it rolls. Train of thought, right on schedule. <laughs> Anger, unload the daydreams. I ordered extra in case things get slow in class. Might come in handy, if this new school is full of boring, useless classes. Which it probably will be. Oh, sadness. I have a super important job just for you. Really? Mm-hmm. Follow me. And there. Perfect. This is the circle of sadness. Your job is to make sure that all the sadness stays inside of it. So, how was the first day of school? It was fine, I guess. I don't know. Do you ever look at someone and wonder, what is going on inside their head? Did you guys pick up on that? Sure. Ooh, go ahead. Something's wrong. We're gonna find out what's happening, but we'll need support. Signal the husband. Ahem. <clears throat> Uh-oh, she's looking at us. What did she say? What? Oh, oh, uh, sorry, sir. No one was listening. Is it garbage night? Uh, we left the toilet seat up. What? What is it, woman? What? Signal him again. Ah, so, Riley, how was school? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Time. For this, we gave up that Brazilian helicopter pilot? School was great, all right? What was that? I thought you said we were gonna act casual. Riley, is everything okay? <sighs> Sir, she just rolled her eyes at us. All right, make a show of force. I don't want to have to put the foot down. No, not the foot. Riley, I do not like this new attitude. Oh, I'll show you attitude, old no, man. No, 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 breathe. What is your problem? Just leave me alone. Sir, reporting high levels of sass. Take it to DEFCON 2. DEFCON 2! I don't know where this disrespectful attitude came from. You want a piece of this, Pops? Yeah, well, look. Prepare the foot. Keys to safety position. Ready to launch on your command, sir. Just shut up! Fire! That's it. Go to your room. The foot is down. The foot is down. Yeah! Woo! Good job, gentlemen. That could have been a disaster. Well, that was a disaster. Come, fly with me, Gachinya. <sighs> Riley's acting so weird. Why is she acting so weird? What do you expect? All the islands are down. Joy would know what to do. That's it. Until she gets back, we just do what Joy would do. Great idea. Anger, fear, disgust. How are we supposed to be happy? Hey, Riley, I've got good news. I found a junior hockey league right here in San Francisco, and get this, tryouts are tomorrow after school. What luck, right? Hockey? Uh-oh, what do we do? Guys, uh, th 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 this, uh, here, you, you pretend to be joy. Wouldn't it be great to be back out on the ice? Oh, yeah, that sounds fantastic. What was that? That wasn't anything like joy. Uh, because I'm not joy? Yeah, no kidding. Did you guys pick up on that? Uh-huh. Sure. Mm -hmm. Something's wrong. Hey. So, you got some 
fun um, scenes from um, Inside Out. I've got um, this um, page behind me, students, because we're going to try to imagine what it'd be like to write about um, joy, disgust, fear, anger, um, and sadness without using any punctuation at all. Okay, so imagine that this is, you're going to get inside Mrs. Rowley's brain while we're having um, home room, okay? And we're going to see um, all the different <laughs> thoughts and things that are running through um, my head at different times. See how um, this sounds without punctuation, okay? So, we start out. <laughs> I'm just exaggerating, students, if you're reading along with me. <laughs> I almost put some punctuation right there. <laughs> oh, you can't read my writing very well, students, but this is what it would sound like without punctuation, okay? These students are awesome. What the heck? They make me so sad. Why do they do that? Who is spamming now? I could wring their little legs. That is the best answer I've heard all day. These kids are so smart. I wish we were in person so I could give them a big group hug. Never mind. I would spank that kid right now. Now, oh, time to go. Bye. <laughs> Does that make me sound like I'm insane, like I'm crazy? Well, you know, I mean, I might be, but besides that, if we don't have punctuation, it just all blends together and it just is crazy. It's craziness. Instead of moving between madness said this, or anger said this, joy said this, fear is feeling this, now disgust has got into the picture with question marks, periods, and exclamation points, we sound like we're schizophrenic, like there's seven different people in our heads going off at once, and it is just kind of crazy. So you can see the importance of having punctuation and how hard it would be to read that and make sense of it if we didn't use periods, question marks, and exclamation points to differentiate our writing. We'll continue to talk about punctuation, um, but I thought that might be a fun illustration to help you realize um, that it's what makes sense of what's going on in our head, all the different emotions and feelings that are happening when we write it down. We can use punctuation, then it makes more sense. It's organized and clear, and we can move between the different emotions and feelings more easily, and it makes more sense. Okay, I have one last activity for us before we log off. These are spelling words for the week, and I've got a mind reader puzzle for you. So soon I'm going to give you five clues. If you would number on a scratch piece of paper, one, two, three, four, and five, you're going to try to identify which of these words is in 
my head, okay, today. Okay. All right. The first clue is, it is one of our spelling words for the week. <laughs> so for number one, you can just write down anything, okay? Okay, second clue. Okay. This word begins with a consonant. So if you had one of these words written down, you need to change your guess, probably. If you had one of these other words written down, you might be okay to just leave guess two the same. It begins with a consonant. Okay, this word ends with a consonant also. So you want to look through if you guessed a word that ended with a E, here, 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 um, you need to guess something else. Okay. Okay, number four. This word begins with a letter that is close to the end of the alphabet. Okay. The word that I'm thinking about today is close to the end of the alphabet. Okay. And then finally, the word that I'm thinking of um, is often used um, when you're talking about IVs. <laughs> if you've ever heard a hospital, been in a hospital, or heard a nurse something talk about an IV, this is the word that they are referring to. Okay? That's your final clue. Students, so if you can think of the word that I am thinking of, I'll reveal it in our team meeting, okay? A little bit later. So good job practicing with these words. Practice spelling them. Make sure you know which word is used for what. We're going to be playing some more games. You can do the word searches that I posted as well, students. And we'll catch you next in... Um, team rooms and home rooms, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks.